On Nationwide this evening, it's Good Friday and we have a special programme about expressions of faith. We meet the Wicklow nuns who are running a range of courses in their spirituality centre which is open to people of all faiths and none. And from the northwest, we visit Holy Wells, revered by many as special places for prayer and contemplation. Hello and welcome. This being Good Friday, we're bringing you a programme about Irish religious sites. And we begin our programme here at Holy Cross in County Tipperary. We're going to find out about the history of this famous abbey and see the relics which have been housed here for many, many years. <laughs> Holy Cross Abbey has been a place of pilgrimage down the centuries. People have been especially drawn to the two relics of the true cross, which are claimed to be a section of the cross on which Jesus Christ was crucified. I met oh, up with Tom you. Gallagher yeah, to you? find out nice more about this spiritual place. Holy Cross Abbey has been established since the 12th century, Tom. In essence, what's its history all about? Well, Donald Moore O'Brien founded this abbey in 1182. It was then he enshrined a relic of the True Cross, so it became a great place of pilgrimage over the centuries. It was restored and added to by under the patronage of the Butlers of Ormond, 1400 to 1450, and then it was a place of pilgrimage until it was dissolved under Henry VIII about 1540. And uh, from there it was transferred to a lay person and it survived for some more years until the last monk died here in 1735 and from then on people were buried within the abbey and it became ruinous at that stage. And the, the major restoration in the 70s, what happened here during that period? It happened that Willie Hayes, who was curate here and under the direction of Archbishop Morris, uh, decided they would restore the abbey as our parish church. They had to change the law to get that done. And inside, all the burials had to be removed, excavated, and reinterred outside on the north side of the abbey. And then the whole abbey, the church initially, was restored, and then various features around, including parts of the cloister, were also restored. <laughs> And what are the key architectural features at the Abbey here, Tom? Well, uh, just in the cloister here, you have the medieval doorway to the chapter house, the only surviving one in the country. We have the best preserved night stairs. Inside are two shrines which display for us the high point of Cistercian art in stone in Ireland. They're fabulous monuments. We have the finest rib ceiling of any any. Uh, building from the medieval period and we also have the oldest church bell in Ireland. This magnificent abbey attracts a huge number of tourists each year, all hungry for knowledge of the site. And so for that reason the community came together to set up guided tours. And I'm going to tag along to one of these guided tours to find out more. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You're all very welcome to Holy Cross Abbey. My name is John, and I'm going to be your tour guide this afternoon. John Burke, you're the chairman of the Holy Cross Community Network. How did the, the tours come about? The tours came about, Anne, because I think about a year and a half ago, we noticed that there was a big increase in the volume of people stopping here. Uh, I suppose we were on the route between Monegal and Cashel, where uh, President Obama had been and the Queen had been. So people were in the area and they were stopping here, and we saw a need for some sort of a facility and a service for the people. And are the guided tours bringing in extra visitors? Well, they are, yeah. We have bookings right through the summer. We have, uh, we have school tours that we put together. We can do a tour for primary school, for secondary school. We do active retire groups. We do buses. We do, if people bring an interpreter from other countries, we do tours with them. So we have a variety of tours, and we're very flexible in the way we deal with them. You need, you need to know who, you're to, who your audience is. So we, we start the tour by having a chat with them, where they're from, how they heard about us, uh, and what parts they might be interested in. And when we, we can tailor the tour for that. We can have a tour that lasts 30 minutes, we can have a tour that lasts an hour. Uh, one occasion a lady came here, she said she had 20 minutes, she was in an awful hurry. An hour and a half later she was still here. And she had a, a, a great experience here. She had a very spiritual experience as well uh, when she got to, to view the relics of the True Cross. So it has, it has something for everybody. 
And typically, where have your volunteer guides come from? They're mostly from around the area. We have some from Turles, from the neighbouring parishes, mostly from Holy Cross and the surrounding area. They're volunteers. They, they come together here to, to give the tours. And I suppose when you have somebody who is volunteering, you have a great pride in what they do and what they deliver. And that comes through on the tour. Hold your arms like this. And I imagine, John, that many people come here to see the relic, but stand back in astonishment when they see the beautiful building here. They do, of course. Yeah. Well, the relic is what Holy Cross is known for. The name of the area is Holy Cross because of the relic, and people come here for that. But then when they get to experience the rest of the tour and the folklore and the, the fantastic history that's here and all the different aspects to it, I think they, they have a, a very, uh, overall, a very rounded experience of, of Holy Cross and a fantastic uh, tour experience. Okay, I've just mentioned the bell to you. Would anybody like to ring the oldest church bell in Ireland? Well, here I am. I can't really pass up the chance to ring the oldest bell in Ireland. Oh, yeah. that's strong enough. Having heard so much about the relics of Holy Cross, I was very curious to see them myself. And so parish priest, Father Tom Breen, told me all about them. Holy Cross, named after the relic of the Holy Cross. Um, not only do you have one relic, you have two relics here. That's right. We have the most important relic we have is known as the Ormond relic. And that was presented, as far as we can gather, about the middle of the 13th century by the Butler family to the abbot, then abbot of Holy Cross. And it became a source of pilgrimage over the centuries, over the years. The second relic that we have was presented uh, at the reopening of Holy Cross Abbey in 1974. And for that, to mark that occasion, the Vatican presented a second relic of the cross to Holy Cross to mark the opening. And these, in many ways, are the attractions for people to come here and observe and to, and to pray. I think they have been at the very heart of the devotional life of patrons of Holy Cross down through the years. And even at the present time, it wasn't until the relic disappeared that I fully appreciated how deeply uh, the cross was embedded in the spirituality of, of the people of the locality. I was devastated at the time. Uh, in, on a nice bright October afternoon, two individuals came in here into the abbey and they cut through the, the uh, cage or the case where we had the relics stored and the relics disappeared. But there was a very uh, fortuitous and happy outcome to that. One of the most joyful occasions in my life was when the police or the guards called me to uh, go and identify the relics that had been secured um, by the guardie and they asked me to go and identify him and that was probably one of the happiest days of my life. And tell me father, was it divine intervention or was it good police work that returned those relics to Combination of both I think. <laughs> <laughs> well isn't it wonderful that they're back here in uh, their rightful place? Absolutely. And the guided tours take place twice weekly on Wednesdays and Sundays at 2 p.m. and can be booked on the website below. Well, I really enjoyed my tour of the Abbey and I'd recommend it to anybody who's passing through the area. Now, Father Breen alluded to the devotional practices associated with Holy Cross Abbey, but holy wells also have a special significance for Irish people, and they're found all over the country. In County Donegal, the County Council has undertaken an initiative to survey and record all the holy wells in the county. Eileen Magner has more. It has drawn people for centuries. Dune Well, probably the best known holy well in Donegal, but there are many, many more, each with its own significance archaeologically, spiritually and in folklore. A unique heritage Donegal County Council was anxious to document in a survey. At the start of the survey we knew that there was 164 holy wells in County Donegal. 
Uh, now we knew of those, we knew the location of most of them, but there was about 43 that we didn't know the exact location of. And I suppose part of the survey was to try and find out where the location of those wells actually were. We located 26 of the missing holy wells, as we call them. Now that still leaves about 17 that we still need to find the location of, so there's another day's work to be done there. I've been coming here now since uh, lost my teens, and uh, I've through my mother and her faith, and she was devout and, and, and everything to do with Our Lady or who Holy Wells or we could have felt like it had done you good if you were any sickness or weakness or I had a very sick child, one of the second last of my children, and I felt she got a cure here. As each generation passes, more and more of that information, that folklore, is being lost. And part of the purpose of the survey was to try and capture some of the stories, some of the rituals, some of the prayers uh, that were associated with these wells. Because the wells themselves, it isn't just about the wells. Um, there's a whole uh, cultural aspect to do with the, the wells. Um, the rituals that people would have when they'd come to the well, the prayers that would be said at the well itself. Um, the little votive offerings that people would come and leave sort of at the well. Um, sometimes they'd come along as in here in Dune Well, where they would tie uh, uh, rags to a bush and to make their, their request. Um, and they would leave sort of other little offerings as well. Taurus Columquilla. On the 9th of June, every year for generations in Glen Columkill, people have walked the 15 stations associated with St. Columkill, including his holy well. Many of the wells in Donegal are associated with saints and form part of a thurus. Some are associated with cures and all have their own rituals and prayers. We're in Barvan and Kilcar in southwest Donegal and we're here at St Cairns Holy Well and uh, the site of his uh, monastery. It is generally believed that uh, St Cairn was uh, contemporaneous with St Patrick. According to a tradition, he was born in Cape Clear Island, Ellen Clarin, off the Cork coast, and, and his main monastery was at Sire, which is, I believe, in the Diocese of Ossery, and that he, he is a a patron of Orsary and is one of the Twelve Apostles of Ireland. Kevin, you have this holy well in your back garden nearly. What's yeah. the folklore associated with it? Um, it would be a station that would be done locally um, on the 4th of March every, every, every year. And, and it would be one of three wells, Eileen. And um, on this particular well, we come down, you can see the little cairn there. Um, in, the, in the centre and every time they come round to a decade of the rosary they would um, used to throw a wee stone into the centre. Public response was tremendous. People came forward and said well look there's a holy well in our area uh, this is what we know about it. Now some of that information we had recorded already uh, and was on the, on the record so that was great but there were other wells that we, we didn't know about. First of all we didn't even know existed and one of the things that came out of the survey was that there were 16 holy wells that we didn't know existed that people were able to identify for us and so now they've been added to the record. So that was a very important contribution that the public made. One of the wells documented in the survey hadn't been recorded before and you'd barely notice it in the mountainside at Muckross but strictly speaking it's not a holy well. Tubber Crapistoon, the well of Crapistoon, he was king of the fairies in Muckross here and uh, he controlled things around this area and he told the locals when he was taking a excursion to Sligo to fight against the fairies.